In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Laudetur Jesus Christus, Semper Laudetur, and a blessed first Sunday of Advent. As you have seen, the old church today, it's painted in violet. The vestment of the priest, violet. The tablecloth in front of the altar, violet. The stall of the ministry of the Eucharist, violet. The cover of the ambo, violet. Sana pati ang donation ng mga parishioner ngayon ay violet. Huwag mo ng orange yung ambiente. Huwag mo na ang pula, 50. Mas maganda ang violet. Pero kung gusto nyo ang dilaw, mas maganda din ang dilaw. Kulay na muli pagkabuhay ni Kristo, ang pinakamaganda, ang asul, ang kulay ni Mama Mary. Let us start with the etymology. What is the meaning of the word Advent? It comes from the Latin Adventus, which means Pagdating. So in Greek it's called Parousia, in Latin Adventus, Tagalog Pagdating, and in English Advent, the coming of Christ. Two are the comings of Christ. The first, 2021 years ago, when he was born in Bethlehem, in the poor cave of Bethlehem. And the second, at the end of time, but he will come to judge the living and the dead. So, how do we prepare for the first coming? And how do we prepare for the second coming? This is the homily of today. Ang paghahanda para sa unang pagdating ni Cristo. How do we prepare to celebrate the birthday, the first coming of Christ? First of all, uh, anytime I start my classes with students in philosophy, I always ask them, we are in the year 2021. What has happened 2021 years ago? Can you believe that half of the class doesn't know the answer? Somebody said, Father, hindi ko alam kasi hindi pa ako pinanganak. 2021 years ago was the birthday of our Lord. So if we have to prepare a birthday cake on Christmas for the birthday of Jesus, a gigantic chocolate cake, we have to put 2021 candles at matusuno ang buong bahay. So Jesus came 2021 years ago. He was born at midnight or the 24th of December in this tiny cave of Bethlehem by the mother and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and Joseph was the foster father. So how do we prepare for Christmas, for the first coming? Simple. If a woman is pregnant and is waiting to give birth to a child, what is she doing in the house? The same thing we must do. In this moment, I remember my friend uh, Roxanne and Pete Lavas. Congratulations for your baby girl. And I've seen how well they prepare for the coming of this girl. First of all, the crib. You have to prepare a crib. That's why each one of us, in our own houses, we should have a crib or a belen. It could be a big belen. My father used to have this big Belen with all the statues, with the moss, with the trees. It took almost one month to prepare the Belen. It was a very exciting moment, the preparation of the Belen. But if you don't have time or space, you can just buy a tiny Belen, go to Shopee or to Lazada from 300 pesos patas. It's important in every house to have a Belen because it is the crib, the symbol that Christ is born for us. And then not only the Belen, we should beautify the house with the Christmas tree, with light. Then we have to buy clothes and shoes to be worn for the first time on Christmas Eve. And then food. For example, here in the seminary, on Christmas Day, we priests and religious, we ask our cook what we wish to, to eat. Our favorite dish. Me, my favorite dish, lasagna al forno, because my mother on Christmas used to make lasagna al forno. Our parish priest, the Vulcanic Father Jean Paolo Bautista, and request a steak as thick as this, para dinosaur steaks. And Father JM, you can be surprised, Lugao, okay, unlimited Lugao. Eat all you can. So we need to have good food and good drink on Christmas. Not only that, exchange of gifts. It's very important to spend money, buy good gifts, and give to relatives and friends. The only thing we should never do is to buy a gift for ourselves. I remember the, the ads of Apple a couple of years ago in Italy. It was like this. 
on this Christmas day, buy a gift to the person you love most. Buy a gift for yourself. Give to you an iPhone 12. So if somebody buy a gift for himself, obviously he did not understand anything of the meaning of Christmas. So the cream, the beautification, the clothes, the food, the gift. Do not believe the so-called <clears throat> These prophets of dooms who want to destroy Christmas. Can you believe in Europe, in Italy, can you believe that in the schools and in public places, people are not allowed to make the Belen because the non-Christian might be offended. What about the Muslim? What about the atheists? Then they are not allowed to have the Christmas tree in public places. And even in the house, because he said, Christmas tree will increase... <coughs> The global warming. Because if it is a true tree, you have to cut the forest. If it is made of plastic from China, when you burn it, it will create toxin clouds. And then stop buying gifts and buying clothes. Because, okay, when you hear this kind of talk, they are prophets of doom. Don't listen to them. First of all, the only family was not as poor as they claimed to be. St. Joseph at the carpentry shop. He had his house in Nazareth. And when the three Magi, they brought gold, gold, ginto, incense, and mirrors to the Blessed Mother, she accepted it willingly because, of course, women, they know they need to run the house to buy food and clothes. So don't listen to these prophets of doom. Enjoy a happy, colorful, f delicious Christmas by preparing in this way. Let us now now to the second point. The preparation for the second coming, that is a more serious subject matter. Jesus will come at the end of time to judge the living and the dead. The reading of today is all about that. Uh, we never know the day and the time. Jesus said, Babalik ako, gaya ng isang magnanak o sa gabi. Sa tingin mo, magnanak, I will call you, Hello, madam, ako po isang magnanak. Opo, opo, mamayang gabi pupunta ko sa inyo. Pakiiwas na bukas ang pintuan ng bahay. Opo, pati ang pera sa... Sa salamesa, salamat po na. Ganitong boba magnanakaw? Of course, it will come in a day, in an hour. Nobody expect. And it will still. And Jesus said, like a thief in the night, I'll come and take your soul. So you must be ready every day. One time, I was invited to preach the Lenten recollection in a parish of nearby. And the topic was, be ready for the coming of Christ. So the church was full and I told the parishioners, Malay niño, mamayang gabi, isa sa inyo ay mamamatay. So inuulit ko yan, Malay niño, mamayang gabi, isa sa inyo mamamatay. At 10 o'clock, the collection ended, they went home. 11.15, the parish priest called me up on the cell phone. Father Paulo, is it true that you said, Malay niño, mamayang gabi, isa sa inyo mamamatay? Yes. What happened? One parishioner who attended your recollection, he went home, he took a coffee, then he had a heart attack, and he's now dead. So we go, wow, malakas ang salita ng Dios. Uh, from that moment, they never invited me again to celebrate Mass in that parish or to preach a recollection. Not even to bless a tricycle. <laughs> they were afraid of me. But this is the reality. I've been a priest for 30 years. By the way, December 7, 30 years priest anniversary. Please remind, remind me in your prayer. I've celebrated maybe 10,000 funerals. A great majority, they died unexpectedly. Heart attack, stroke, car accident, falling from the stairs. So we must be ready anytime. The question is, how can we be ready? Well, first of all, I give you the four magic words that will save your life. My God, forgive me. So let's say that you are a victim of an accident. What are you going to say before you die? You only a few seconds. My God, forgive me. In these four words is the secret of salvation. Why so? Our faith is encapsulated in my God, forgive me. First of all, there is a word God, so it symbolizes our faith. If I say God, sumasam palataya ko sa Dios. So, faith. My, if I say my God, 
there is love. It's a symbol of love. We use the pronoun, possessive pronoun mine for the persons we love. My wife, my children, my grandchildren. Very seldom you hear my mother-in-law, usually her mother-in-law. So, her mother. <clears throat> so, my indicates love. God indicates faith. Forgive me, uh, atonement and forgiveness for our sin, repentance for our sin. So please keep on repeating this word because you never know an accident can be just around the corner. My God, forgive me. And now, what are we going to do to prepare for the second coming of Christ? Please look at the Advent treat. In the Advent treat, there are four basic candles and one at the center, which is white. What's the meaning of these four candles? The four weeks of Advent. So Advent is four weeks. This is the first, second, third, fourth, and Panglima, Pascona. Um, <clears throat> three candles signify prayer, fasting, and giving. And the pink candle means vote for Lenny. No, <laughs> joy, joy. So what shall I do? First of all, prayer. We need to pray better. We need to pray more. During Advent, every day, we should have a prayer, at least a rosary a day. We should attend the Novena of the Immaculate Conception. We should attend the Simbanga Bean. Every Sunday, the Holy Mass. Don't forget the Mass on Immaculate Conception, which is a feast of obligation. So put daily prayer and Mass at the center of our spiritual life. To pray more, to pray better. Don't do it like those two women. One time I was invited for a Novena Mass in a certain parish. I, I, I was on vacation campaign in the Visayas and 6 p.m. a Misa. So five minutes before 6, I was dressing up. Father, my rosary, bagong Misa. So we go, ladies, it's only five minutes. You cannot say the rosary in five minutes. You know what they said? Kaya yan! We can pray the rosary in five minutes. Oh, sige. So they took the microphone, kneeling on both sides of the pews, and they said, And they said, Brum, 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 magarang. Magimay ka, magarang puno, magarang gracia, ang pinuha ng akani mo, samarang magampong kita sa albe, Regina. Magampong kita, magampong kita, magarang gracia, amen. Four minutes, 57 seconds, the rosary. May kasama sa albe, Regina, may kasama litany. I told them, walang iya kayo. If your husband will tell you, love 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 you, will you be happy? Malkita, 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 maldita ka, will you be happy? Igugma, 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 kita. Ay, 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 look, ano. Ay, 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 tem, 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 kita. Will you be happy? Siyempre, hindi. So, how can you pretend Jesus to be happy if you pray? Abagin, no, pray, 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 So, pray more. Pray better. The second is, Fasting. Fasting from too much food, too much drink, too much cigarette, too much alcohol. Everything which is too much, we have to fast and stop it. You know, the biggest addiction of a day is not cocaine, it's not marijuana, it's not ashes. The biggest addiction nowadays is called the digital addiction. There are people spending day and night, weeks and months, doing only one thing in front of a screen, in front of their computer, in front of their laptop, in front when they eat, when they sleep, when they walk, they are completely addicted. So I was talking with some young people who came here last day. It's semester break, so they have two weeks of semester break. I told them, um, how long do you play video games during your um, semester break? You know what they said? Seven hours a day. Seven days a week. Nang walang tigil. Nakulong sa kanilang kwarto with their earphone. Nang walang tigil. So this is really an addiction. I was invited for dinner. And you know, instead of talking, everybody was on a cell phone. The father was checking the news and the mother was checking the post on Facebook. And Sikuya was playing Mobile Legend. And si Ate was playing Candy Crush. Pati si Lola, si Lola, may malaking table, malaking karate. They were checking the 
Manila Memorial uh, Park kasi may promo. Eh, nakita mo may promo sa kabaho. Buy one, take one. Bili tayo ng dalawang kabaho. Ilang kayo dati sa ilalim ng lamis ng nakama. Ano pa yan? Pati ang aso may sariling tablet. Ang tablet pang aso. He was watching Naked, Girl, N- Naked Dogs in Animal Planet. So, fasting from any kind of addiction. And the last candle is almsgiving. During Christmas, during Advent season, we have to give more than we usually give. So if usually, in a week, we used to give 100 pesos, now it's time to give 500 pesos. So if we have to be more generous. Let me finish with the story. A few days before Christmas, a couple of years ago, the toothpick family came to visit the seminary. I call them the toothpick family because they were all as slim as this. The mother, you know, malnourished, and seven children, like a Christmas tree. Do, re, mi, fa, so, no. And they have nothing to eat. The father went with another woman. So only one sack of rice was left in the bottega of the seminary. I said to the cuisinera, Sige, bigyan natin kanila, sa kanila, isang sako ang bigas. Father, isa lang iniwan dito. Huwag kang magalala. God will provide. So we gave the last sack of rice to them. And they were very happy to bring home 50 kilos of rice. After 10 minutes, the postman arrived from Paranaque post office with an envelope from the Catholic Bishop of Germany. There was a check. It was written. We donate for the seminary of Sanford Mary Macklin one sack of rice a day, so 365 sacks of rice for the whole year. So we go, ambay talaga ng Dios. We gave one, and they gave us 365. And then I learned my lesson. What's the difference between the Bishop Conference of Germany and the Bishop Conference of the Philippines? Well, the first, they give plenty of sacks of rice. The second, give plenty of pastoral letter. So, may the Lord bless you and your family on this first Sunday of Advent, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Laudetur Jesus Christus, semper laudetur.